Good morning everyone. Back with the uh, Ditton 44s that we've been munching our way through, um, tidying up the cabinets, stabilising the cabinets, sympathetically getting them as, as good as we can without re-veneering them or going, uh, going silly. The cabinets are now solid. Um, they are sanded back nicely. They've had one coat of oil. They'll get probably two more, but I won't do that until I've finished taking the drivers out and mucking around with them. Um, covers are all done. Um, yeah, I mean, from what they are to, or what they were to what they are now. Um, yeah, really, really pleased with them. So uh, we've reinvented these. They, they've got nothing really to do with a 44 anymore apart from the cabinets and I'm going to be reusing the crossover boards. We have different woofers. Okay, they come from a Ditton 442, which was kind of the evolution of the 44. Um, we have a different five and a quarter inch mid-base driver, my favorite or one of my favorite mid mid-base drivers made by Microlab. Um, you find these in a lot of Gale speakers and the bigger six and a half inch as well, which is a, a really good driver. I just wish I could buy them new um, because I would be using them in everything. They're just really good. And these QTX tweeters, which are quite a budget tweeter. A pair of those is about 35, 40 pounds. But um, I really like them and they've got a, a nice big um, diaphragm on them so they can play low. Um, and the lower you play a driver, the longer wavelengths you're using. Um, this separation is always critical, but if you can cross this to the mid-bass driver at a lower frequency, it kind of negates this. Um, so the off-axis performance is, is much better. So that's why I chose that. Uh, the original HF2000 tweeters were... I took them apart. My intention was to kind of rebuild them, but they were so gummed up. Um, cleaning out the pole piece would have just been a nightmare. So anyway, this is what we've ended up with. And there's not a Ditton 44 out there like this. <laughs> That's a really good thing. Um, this is probably the fourth pair of 44s that I've customised. I've done no end of rebuilds and refurbishments on normal 44s, but um, this is probably the fourth reinvention. And um, I did want to find a use for these woofers. Ah, it just sounds right. And um, yeah, it's turned out well. So like I say, um, first thing I do when the drivers are in the cabinets is measure, shoot measurements of the individual drivers, just raw, no crossovers on them all at one meter away from the tweeter on tweeter axis with one watt and um, that way I get how the driver is sonically performing in these cabinets um, spaced where they are on the baffle and normally that gives me a good indication on where I need to head or start the design with the crossover what components I will probably want to start using um, the roll-offs I'm probably going to look at using because you can naturally see where <clears throat> drivers are rolling off and starting to break up so the areas you need to avoid um, and uh, any peaks and things that you might need to deal with uh, with notch filtering and, and things like that so um, yeah it's uh, it's turned out well so first thing I do is design the crossover based on the measurements. And I had an afternoon last week doing that. It does take quite a while. Um, <clears throat> looking at the impedance as well, making sure that was okay. So these are now a measurement based design. So the next process for me is to listen to them. And I'll probably be doing that tonight. So there'll be a, a concluding part to this with any adjustments I need to make. Um, but in terms of the way they're measuring, 
and when I've got that crossover clipped together on the workbench, um, I often play music through them, certain tracks that I know are going to be an issue um, if something's wrong, and then when I go to listen to them later on. So I can almost deal with that as well and make some adjustments. Um, and it's always surprising what you, you know, there's this, everyone kind of tries to shoot for this flap frequency response, which is the frequency response isn't a measure of how the speaker is going to sound. It's a measure of how accurate it's going to be. Um, it doesn't really tell you much more than that. Um, the off axis measurements are more important. Um, and sometimes uh, I've mentioned this before, I will compromise an on axis measurement for better off axis performance because the off axis really dictates how the speaker is going to integrate into the room. Um, you know, sound bounces around as if you're dropping a, a stone into a pond, the way the waves ripple out, um, they'll hit objects. So in this case of sound walls and things, and reflect back and you want those reflections to be as near to the on axis so what you're listening to as possible really um, so yeah sometimes you you compromise here and there but um, what I'm seeing in the measurements so far I'm liking um, so I'm going to put those measurements up now um, they are fairly similar to how a 44 measures they're quite a tilted down response so up in the base tilting down towards the HF um, and there's no reason why these shouldn't outperform uh, a 44 um, they should be faster and more detailed for sure um, and I think this the base performance from these is going to be really good so um, yeah here are all the measurements and we'll go through the crossover Okay, so let's draw out the Ditton 44 crossover. I'm doing this from memory, so hopefully you can, uh, it'll be about right. So the tweeter circuit on a Ditton 44 is a 30, uh, th third order. And the tweeter is connected out of phase on the Ditton 44. So we have a four microfarad. That's often made up of two sets of uh, two microfarad. And we have a six microfarad cap. Normally that's three two microfarads together. And an air core inductor down to ground, which I think from memory is 0.11 millihenry. <clears throat> so yeah, that's our tweeter arrangement. Um, on the mid-range we have a 30 microfarad capacitor. Sometimes that's a 24. Um, I think the Mark 1s tended to use a 24 and the later Mark 2s were a 30. It doesn't make a huge difference in all honesty but um, there you go. And then we have an inductor. I think from memory it's about 0.6, uh, 0.65 millihenry. And we go into our positive of our mid driver. And then we are grounding this um, capacitor here with a 2.2 millihenry inductor. So creating a, a second order part of the high pass and then for our low pass part of the mid range we are grounding on a six microfarad capacitor so that's our mid range circuit on the 44 the woofer circuit fourth order a lot going on a lot of components in this so if a 
big iron core inductor. Uh, I think it's 3.2, maybe 3.5 millihenry. Then we come into a 2.2. These are both iron core. You will see air core versions of these as well. Um, there was a few different variants. And then into our big 12 inch woofer. And then we ground this inductor with a 72 microfarad capacitor. And we ground this inductor with a 72 as well. So fourth order. Um, Someone got their knickers in a twist in some comments on another pair of speakers recently about, oh, why are you, why have you got third order slopes meeting second order slopes and first order slopes meeting, meeting third order? It doesn't matter. Um, there's really no hard and fast rule. It's your, when you're say a mid range driver, you're cutting the top and the bottom off. You're kind of dealing with its roll off, how it's naturally rolling off anyway. So, sometimes you just don't need a lot of parts you might need to change the crossover order in order to correct some phase shifting that's going on um, so it's never second order woofer second order tweeter sometimes it is sometimes it's not plenty of speakers out there with first order woofer circuits third order tweeters just depends um, so much into it I'm going to do a video on it at some point um, it will probably be very long and boring <laughs> <laughs> but um, I get asked a lot about it and I really enjoy this part it's how you make and break a speaker how you voice it how you give it give it its character to a degree so it's important so anyway <clears throat> that is the Ditton 44 crossover um, so I'm going to retain the Ditton 44 crossover board and I'll go through what I did to integrate these new drivers. So we start with the tweeter circuit. It's no longer third order. And we no longer have a four microfarad there. We are now second order. I'm retaining this inductor as the right value. And this has become a 4.7 microfarad cap. And I'm using a polypropylene capacitor on here as well. So I'm also introducing a resistor into this circuit 2.2 ohm just to attenuate it a bit as well so mid-range circuit has changed a bit as well um, I'm using still a 30 microfarad I've got a resistor here 2.2 ohm again um, <clears throat> this inductor value here has changed from 0.65 to 0.9 And this capacitor value here, which was six microfarad, has changed to an 11. So what we're doing in effect is not playing this up as high and we're playing this tweeter lower because we can do that with this tweeter, which we couldn't do with the HF2000. So the Ditton 44 has a crossover point between the mid range and the tweeter <clears throat> around the five um, kilohertz region we're more now about three so that's um, that's going to help woofer circuit has changed as well so this inductor here has become a larger inductor it's now 4.3 millihenry um, the 2.2 we still retain and we are a third order arrangement not a fourth so this 72 microfarad cap here becomes a 60. So this circuit is a little bit more like the Ditton 442, except the second inductor on the Ditton 442 is a 0.55 millihenry. So we are cutting it off lower than it's used in the Ditton 442 because this mid-range driver will happily play lower. Um, in fact, it works very well in the um, mid-range enclosure in the Ditton 44. So, like I say, in the Ditton 44, crossover frequencies were about 500 hertz and 5 kilohertz, 5,000 hertz. 
with this speaker we are more like 400 and 3000 so yeah much better okay so here are the original crossover boards that i have um, gone through and put the new components on you've seen me do that loads of times before <laughs> i don't want to keep repeating the same stuff so um i'll go through this um so our tweeter circuit positive comes in um, pick up our 2.2 ohm resistor our 4.7 microfarad capacitor and we go out there originally was a capacitor here so i've jumped that um, i can take my positive lead from here rather than have to jump that um, our inductor down to ground and our mid-range circuit come in through a 2.2 ohm resistor 30 microfarad capacitor grounding on this inductor we carry on to this 0.9 millihenry inductor and out to our mid-range and we're grounding that with this 11 microfarad cap here our woofer circuit coming through this big inductor into this inductor out to our woofer and we've got a set of caps here making our 60 down to ground so yeah all soldered up, time to put these in, then have a listen. <laughs> 